Wave away if you like. There's one. Come this way. We're all still civilized. Hey kids. Hey kids. Hello Emma. Hey Rory. Hey Charlotte. Hey Anne. Hi folks, hello. Hi. Hi Larry. Hey. Hi Larry. Hi James. Hi we're all so sober. <laughs> Um, I, I kind of the voices, the slings and arrows of outrageous too many brandies last night, and, <laughs> and a bottle of white wine with three graces, Denise, <laughs> Caitlin, and Ashley this afternoon. So the voice might break down. Okay. The last time we gathered here in 2019 was the 22nd year in succession that 40 plus CISCs, their partners and friends, came together to celebrate our collective CISCness and share face-to-face -face stories of our lives and times. And then the great convulsion of March 2020, when the modern plague of COVID-19 closed down our world into restrictions and worries none of us could have nightmared. So, 2020 and 2021, became the last years of unmeeting, ungreeting, of remote living. As far as I understand, as an extended family scattered across this island and abroad, we came through the pandemic without losing anyone to COVID. And we're all thankful and relieved for our good luck in that regard, as so many families are grieving for those ripped from the hearts of their homes during this awful, eerie two years. There have been some, or unfortunately more than some, late withdrawals from our gathering uh, due to new cases of infection and infection concerns, and we wish all of those affected mild symptoms and a speedy recovery. Some of the family here tonight and others unable to attend have courageously and professionally worked on the front line of healthcare to care for the hospitalised and nursing home COVID patients even in advance of the availability of vaccines and at times of limited PPE. I'm sure you all join with me in acknowledging their wonderful bravery and indomitable contribution to the ultimate good cause of saving and protecting lives. While the spectre of COVID still hovers over us and the spike in infected numbers in recent post-mask times means concern is clearly not yet an emotion of the past. Since the 24th of February, our shocked attention has been riveted on a convulsion of a different lethal kind, the egregious invasion and war crimes being perpetrated in Ukraine. I know we are all horrified at what is happening there day by day, night by night, in a seeming unending display of man's inhumanity to man. And in the words of President Zelensky, we wish Salve Ukraini, glory to Ukraine. We do have, this is seamless connection here, folks. We do have a connection to Ukraine, albeit historic. For it was in the Black Sea and the Sea of Azov that my generation's great grandfather, John Sisk, with his brother Michael, fought as able seamen on the battleship HMS Rodney against the Russians in the Crimean War of the 1850s. And that, by the way, is the HMS Rock. That's a, that's a scanned print of a page of the HMS Rock. So it was, it, it was pre-Steve, the those So have a look at that. Bring it around there. Anyway. Anyway, so you can have a look at that. Page, right? um, we would not be here today 
If John Sisk had not survived an intense barrage of cannon fire from the shore batteries overlooking Sebastopol, when the Rodney ran aground on the 17th of October 1854 and was subjected to a bombardment which lasted some hours before being pulled out of danger. Other sailors died and were injured in that encounter, but John Sisk survived unscathed. After the war, he demobbed into the Coast Guard, settling with his Cork born wife Mary Barry in Cloughy County Down. As most will know, John died in 1913 and is buried in Ballygalgut Cemetery. John started the northern clan of Sisks, but hailed himself from East Cork, where there's a long line and concentration of Sisks all the way back to Robert Sisk, who lived in the Whitegate area in the 16th century. As I've said, we owe our very lives to John Sisk, the Navy man, who fought in the Black Sea and the Sea of Azov in another conflict against Russia. John Sisk is one of the reasons we're here tonight. The other reason, the other reason is the passing of my uncle Dan in December 1997. For it was at Dan's funeral and subsequently at his mum's mind that the northern and southern sisters agreed we should try to meet in happier circumstances to sustain the connection between our families. The first Valley Buffet happening the weekend before Easter 1998 was the outcome. It is, I think, poignant that we renew our annual gathering in the year of the 25th anniversary of Dan's passing into the Great Unknown. Since 1998, across four generations, we have met in this home from home of Jackson's Hotel, all of us getting younger and younger, of course, <laughs> to renew our friendship and our bonds, to laugh and talk, and to share our experiences, our successes, and our losses. And since we last met, we have lost two of the greatest supporters of this family event, neither of them Sisks per se, but key honorary members of the Sisk clan, my beloved mother Nora and cousin Mary's incomparable husband David Mollett. Both attended the first Valley Buffet and were ever present until my mum had to move into a nursing home. David's last Valley Buffet was 2019. My mum passed in February 2020, and David shockingly departed this life far too early in April last year. Someone once said, if the people we love are stolen from us, the way to have them live on is to never stop loving them. We will never stop loving Nora and David. Yeah, yeah. Thankfully, there are happier events to roll call from the last years of 2020 and 2021. We have had new life, engagements, marriages, significant birthdays and anniversaries, retirements and other good news stories to celebrate. But before I do a quick run through, I would like to welcome the newbies and the neophytes to our gathering. And this was, this was going to be longer, but it's been closed down. They have come from Aylesbury and Hope and even from the land of kangaroos, but nothing's not here. <laughs> so a great big Valley Buffet Sisk gathering welcome to George, who is here with Alice Sisk. <laughs> to Emma, <laughs> who is here with Rory Graffin. <laughs> All the way from Australia, who is now sleeping apparently, Natalie, <laughs> who is here with her persona and Matt as Dr. Louie. <laughs> visits in the future. So on to the happy family milestones. Since we last met, we've had three splendid new recruits to the extended family. Laura, Jim and Dimpna's daughter, and her partner Matt Hodges, welcomed Charlie into the world in December 2019. And in 2021, Kathy Fry, yeah. Kevin and Sheila's daughter, and her husband Adam had their firstborn. A daughter with what I think, no bias involved, has a wonderful name of me. Also last year, Michael was born to Brona Graffin and her partner Ryan Toll. And as a result, Sean and Anne became great grandparents for the first time. We also have a number of engagements to celebrate. 
Laura Sisk got engaged to Matt in April 2021. Sarah Moffat, Mary and David's daughter, also got engaged to her beau Gary Mullen in October last year. And in the same month, on the 24th, if I remember correctly, Sean Fahey, who's unfortunately not here, and my daughter Neve crossed that Rubicon to become <laughs> fiancés. And then we have the nuptials. Ashley and Alistair married on the 8th of June 2019 in Halifax. Hey, 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 hey. And I understand that Sarah Moffat and Gary Mullen will marry in October this year. I must also mention a very special wedding anniversary. Paul and Denise celebrated their 40th, their Ruby anniversary in 2020. Lastly, significant birthdays past and to come. Roseanne, who I thought was going to be here, sashayed her way to a very young 60 in November 2020. Mm -hmm. My brother Liam crossed the line to 65 in February 21. Uh, and we'll have two new septuagenarians this year. Margaret. Oh. Oh, yeah. Margaret turned 70. Margaret turned 70 in September. And Barry Donaldson, again, just missing an action in November. So live long and prosper to both of them. And congratulations to all the others mentioned for these happy lifetime events. Before I finish, I must thank Denise and her new events assistant, Ashley, <laughs> for, for ensuring the booking and dining arrangements were overseen with the customary smooth officials. <laughs> As you will all appreciate, they took on this role at a difficult time for them, given Paul's health circumstances. And I cannot finish without expressing all of our solidarity, all of our support, and all of our love for Paul and his family. Paul is inimitably Paul golfer, tenor, raconteur, <laughs> philosopher, <laughs> sociologist, fun stirrer, always neat and impeccable with never a lock out of hair, yes. out of place, sorry, a loving husband, father and grandfather, a loving cousin to the rest of us and an ever present down the many years of these gatherings. So I would ask you all to lift up your hearts and to raise your glasses in a salute to Paul. Absolutely. Oh. Oh. Thank you. Thank you. Well done. Well done. Well done.